Hi there everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm the GCSE science teacher. In today's video, we're going to be learning about sex determination for GCSE biology. I hope you guys do find this video helpful. And if you do, feel free to give it a thumbs up so I know. You can also share this video with someone else to help them out with their studies. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe, join this community here on YouTube. It'd be lovely to have you as part of it. Thank you for choosing to revise with me. So let's get started. Let's talk about sex determination for the genetics topic inheritance. Now before we get on to uh, you know the types of chromosomes that determine the sex of an individual we need to kind of understand what a chromosome is in the first place. So at GCSE they want you to know that a chromosome is a single strand or a strand of DNA that has been coiled up. So we know the DNA structure is a double helix and it's in literally two separate strands and they're coiled together that's what we mean by the double helix. Um, but if we wind that DNA up and we coil it down even further, we can actually put it in kind of like a folder, like we would with lots of documents. If we have lots of paperwork and we kind of organize it into different folders, that's essentially what a chromosome is. And those chromosomes are found within the nucleus of the cell. That means chromosomes are only found in eukaryotic cells. Remember that prokaryotes do not have a nucleus, things like bacteria, for example. But plants and animals like ourselves, we do have have chromosomes because we are eukaryotes, we have that nucleus. So in addition to the DNA being tightly coiled up in the chromosomes, proteins such as histones actually help this process to keep that structure of a chromosome as well. Um, but there are a few other things we need to be aware of in terms of chromosomes, specifically the number of chromosomes. So I did do a whole video on this uh, previously and I'll link this for you, but we should know at GCC that there are 23 pairs or 46 chromosomes in the human body. And this is what makes the cells diploid. So we're talking about body cells in humans. Um, so for example, our skin cells, our liver cells, our eye cells, for example, right, there's 23 pairs of those chromosomes. Um, this is only for humans, however, because if we look at other animals, other plants, they will have a slightly different number. So just be aware of that as well. It's a big misconception. Some students will um, think everything has the same number. It's only in humans, okay. Um, but also, in our sex cells. So if you're a man, your sperm cell, in a woman, it's the egg cell, there will be 23 chromosomes, not 23 pairs. And this is because those cells are haploid, meaning they have half the genetic information because when the sperm and egg cell join together during a fertilization event, this is essentially what makes the 23 pairs or the 46 in total. Now, if we actually look at an individual and we have um, all the chromosomes here, you can see um, there are, essentially the homologous chromosome. So for example, chromosome one, we have two pairs of them, one from the father, one from the mother. Um, and it's the same throughout up to 23. And we're going to explore this in a bit more detail now. So let's have a look at a karyotype of an individual. So a karyotype essentially just refers to all the chromosomes of an individual. So this is all chromosomes 1 to 23 in the pairs that we've discussed before. And this is the karyotype. We will come on to chromosome 23 in a moment and how this can determine if someone is a man or a woman. But um, we're going to just focus on chromosomes 1 to 22 at the moment, which are called the autosomal chromosomes. This just refers to the chromosomes, which are nothing to do really with the sex of an individual. Um, that's more to do with chromosomes 23. So we'll come on to that in a second. The autosomal chromosomes, these are the ones that really determine the characteristics of an individual. So the phenotype, how they physically look based on the genotype, those genes that are found on the autosomal chromosomes, um, specifically chromosome 7, which we've discussed before. We know quite a lot about chromosome 7 in terms of any sort of chronic defects, uh, birth defects, chronic diseases, that kind of thing. Um, because a lot of the conditions that you should know for GCSE, like cystic fibrosis, for example, um, we've been able to, as scientists, understand that that affects chromosomes uh, seven. We've worked backwards from the disease and we've been able to look at the genes to see what the issue is. Um, so we know quite a bit about certain chromosomes. We're still obviously learning more as, as time goes on and technologies improve, but these autosomal chromosomes are really the ones that have the impact on um, the development of an individual, the characteristics of an individual. And um, we'll talk about the uh, sex chromosomes now.
So here is a karyotype of an individual. And what we need to know at GCSE is that there are two types of sex chromosomes. We have an X chromosome and a Y chromosome. If an individual has two X chromosomes, they are classified as a woman. And if there are essentially one X chromosome and only one Y chromosome, so an XY combination, that indicates a biological male. So why is that the case? Why is that the case? Um, because chromosome Y has a lot of the genes associated with male reproductive characteristics, especially those secondary characteristics. Um, and a lot of the hormones that are produced during that time of puberty and throughout the adolescent life as well are found on chromosome Y. Also, some cellular changes during the development of an individual are found on chromosome Y as well. Um, and I will leave some information in the description box if you are interested, specifically focusing on the SRY gene, which is found on chromosome Y. That's just a gene that really determines a lot of the male characteristics um, during the development of a fetus and, and further on into the life of that individual. So it's quite an interesting area of research, a lot of um, information about it. But a lot of the time at GCC, they might give you a karyotype. They might ask you to identify, is this individual a biological man or a biological woman based on the X and Y? chromosomes or the X and X chromosomes. Um, there are instances where some individuals may have additional chromosomes on chromosome 23. So they might have um, XXY or XXXXY or something like this. Um, I can think of a couple of examples. So Kleinfelter syndrome is one of them and also triple X syndrome. There are some other conditions as well. Um, at GCC, you don't really need to know about that. I might li leave some stuff in the description box if you are interested in further reading. Um, but yeah, the, there are, of course, with anything in genetics, there's lots of exceptions, there's lots of additional things that can happen. Um, we're talking more on a sort of like a default level, you know, like a, you know, a biological man default, biological woman default, um, men will have an XY, women will have an XX23 um, chromosome uh, situation. So that's what we're referring to here. And that's what you should know for GCSE. So in terms of the karyotypes, as you can see, we've got two individuals here. We've got a female and a male in terms of their biological sex. And we can see that on the left hand side, we have a female with two X chromosomes. And on the right hand side, we've got a male with an X and a Y chromosome. One of the misconceptions I have found when teaching this is a few students might think the Y chromosome will literally look like a Y because the chromosomes usually look like an X. Um, but in this case, that's that's not necessarily what we're seeing. We're just seeing a very small uh, structure for the Y chromosome. Okay, it's much smaller than the X chromosome. Um, the reason the chromosomes have this X shape, by the way, and this is more of like an A level thing, um, it's because that at the minute they are showing their sister chromatids. So chromosomes can, uh, when they're copied and they divide and things like that, they can actually form something called a sister chromatid, which is like a copy of itself. And that can be held together by something called a centromere. Um, this again is more of an A-level thing. You don't need to really know about the structure of chromosomes or anything like that at GCC, but I just thought I'd mention it in case you did want to know a little bit more um, and you were thinking about A-levels and things like that. And you wanna know how this kind of links to that. Um, it's always good to know a bit of extra information. But yes, all you need to know what you see really is the X chromosome. It's found in both male and females. Women will have two. Men will have uh, only one with a Y chromosome as well. So speaking of GCC, how do we use Punnett square analysis to determine if an individual uh, will have a male or female child with their partner? So, for example, we have a man and a woman. X, Y for the man, X, X for the woman. And we are looking at the probability of them having a boy or a girl. In each case, it's going to be a 50-50 chance. So regardless of um, the age of an individual, regardless of uh, the ethnicity, the anything really, it, it's always going to be 50-50. And that is shown nicely here in the Punnett square. You can see that if we fill in the Punnett square, we've got an XX and an XX on the top and two XYs on the bottom, which indicates we've got two possibilities of a girl and two possibilities of a boy out of four. Um, and it's really important to mention this point. If a couple were to have a boy first, their probability of having a girl next is the same probability. Um, there isn't going to be a higher chance of them having a girl if they've already had a boy or vice versa, because the sperm and egg uh, probability is always going to be 50-50, just because it's a new random chance event as opposed to okay the child has been a boy now it's going to be a girl it's always a random 50 50 chance 
And that's it from me today. I've been the GCSE science teacher and you have been curious. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. You can also share this, as I said, with someone else you think would benefit from learning more. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. Thank you so much if you have. I do appreciate every single one of you. Have a fantastic day and I'll catch you in the next one. Take